We're back. I'm Tina, and now you're going to meet my friends. This is my wonderful friend that you met last week, and his name is Pat Cassell. And we have a new friend today that's on the show, and his name is Anthony Barney. We're going to call him Tony, but he's an attorney, and I want to tell you one right up front. Okay, he's an attorney, but watch this. No slime. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm amazed. That's why he's on the show. No slime. We're going to get you the truth up front and personal, and we want you to know what's going on. Now, we happen to have someone in Washington, D.C. There's a big insurance thing going on back there. And Larry Harrison, of course, he was on the show last week, and he has lots of information about what's going on in Washington, D.C. Pat, did I push this button? Push that right here. Push it right there. Hi, Larry. You're on. Hi there. I'm glad to have you on the air with us. Larry, uh, tell us what's going on back in Washington, D.C., well, I'll tell you, you know, I've been coming back to Washington every year. Sometimes I'm here two or three times during the course of the year. It's my first visit this year, but I'm going to tell you, it's a very different feel. Uh, Congress is poised, as you know, to uh, vote on this health care reform bill. And the way that uh, it's really about the way that people are going to pay for their health care. And this vote could absolutely change the worldwide status of the United States. We agree, as the spokesman here for the National Association of Health Underwriters, which is, once again, a nonprofit, nonpartisan, factual resource for agents and brokers to go to to keep up on legislative changes and also to keep our clients. That's the consumer, it's the end user, it's the, it's the small employer and the large employer and that individual person that's looking to purchase health insurance to help them understand how their plan designs work, the shortcomings of a various plan design, why they have a rate increase and so forth. Right now, we're here trying to educate the elected officials. And I'm going to tell you. There well, are you've got your there. hands full, Larry. I'll say but I'll tell you, there are some very, very sharp minds sitting oh, in Congress right now. And uh, we had the privilege of having uh, Senator uh, Scott Brown from Massachusetts and come to speak to our organization's meeting. And, you know, he's a, he's a sharp guy. He uh, gets it. And he is about change, but he wants to do it on a state basis, not with a sweeping federal change that is pretty much one size fits all. Uh, that is not the way that the health underwriters wants this to, to go about change. We want to have it state-based uh, exchanges is our first choice if we have to go with an exchange uh, versus a federal exchange. And, you know, they're going to try and ramrod this through with the term that we've been hearing. We don't hear a lot about it, but right now we're hearing a lot about reconciliation. Well, what the heck is reconciliation? And, and just looking back, just to give the listeners a brief overview of what this is, it's a relatively new procedure when you look at the history of the United States. It's only been around since 1974, and it's only been used 20 times to actually get a, a law passed. So but I, I understand that it's just for financing. It's not supposed to be for anything like health insurance. Well, I believe that it was, originally that was the way that it was put together. Um, but it, 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 it has some interesting characteristics about it. Uh, for one thing, they can only meet for 20 hours. I found that to be kind of interesting. They meet for 20 hours. The clock stops if there is a new idea that's being presented, and then they discuss it. And, uh, you know, the people are really tired of these behind-closed-door deals. Really? You know, we can do a better job. There's a better job out there. Larry, and, you know, Larry, yeah. we're coming up. We're just almost out of time. So I want to just see uh, if Pat has a question or if Tony has a question. Uh, ask, guys. Larry, um, reconciliation in the past is used uh, essentially for budgetary measures um, in passing legislation. H how do the Democrats in this situation feel like they are going to pass an enormous health care bill that was only intended to be used for budgetary measures? The cost is the problem. 
and they're putting up a bunch of smoke screens about a whole bunch of other issues. The problem is the cost. Health insurance is expensive because health care is expensive. Health care is expensive for a lot of reasons. And I think that this is where they're trying to come up with some form of justification. And so they're feeling that, uh, that reconciliation is the way to go. When I think reconciliation, I'm thinking of a husband and wife, you know. Of course. And here, <laughs> you know, and now here, here it is uh, that they're going to try and ramrod this thing through. And I'm going to say that if I think it's eight days now is when, once again, the line has been drawn in the sand. It started back in August, and then it was moved out till September and October, and then on Christmas Eve they voted, and now they're saying in 10 days they're going to vote. I believe that if uh, Senator Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi believed that they had votes, they would have said, we're going to vote in two days. Yes, absolutely. They, they are not sure that they have the vote. No. What's the word and by the association, Larry? What do they think? We've only got a minute and a half. All right. Uh, what do they think? They think that uh, we have gotten their attention. Uh, I'm going to tell you, Pat, I know you've been back to Washington with us before, and this year they actually had protesters out there. So we are getting their attention. And mainly that was, um, uh, it was unions that were out protesting, and they were really young kids. So I guess they got college students that are fixing to go on spring break to, uh, to go out and protest. But, you know, we're, we're, there are real issues is that we're talking about durable medical equipment and the cost of that, uh, physical therapy. You know, all of these different organizations, hospital organizations, the doctors' associations, all of those people have a lobbyist. Who does not have a lobby is the consumer. Exactly. And that's where the National Association of Health Underwriters comes in to be the lobbyist for that small employer and for, this, for the consumer on an individual basis. Larry, uh, we, we've got to go to a break here. I can't thank you enough for calling us. Fight the good fight, Larry. We do not want this to go through. We expect you to, like, do something, you know, crazy back there. <laughs> we're going to stay in compliance with the, with the laws, and we're oh, going to do it, do it right the first time. That's, that's our mantra. All right. Well, thank you so much for calling in. That's great information, as usual. I'll see you next week. All right. Thank good you luck, so Larry. much. Yeah. Thank you kindly. Okay, Bye -bye. so there you go. Now, here, that's what I'm talking about. This is the kind of information you're going to get on this show. We are working hard to make sure we bring you information that informs you so you're not listening to a bunch of baloney on the drive-by media. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We might discuss this. We might discuss something else. Who knows? We'll be right back.